Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how metal ions are positive and most non-metal ions are negative. You should then be able to relay charges on ions to groups in the periodic table. This might seem like a slightly weird topic, but in the next video we're going to use this to develop a really useful skill in chemistry which is working out the formula of ionic compounds. Let's start with a quick recap of ionic compounds. Here's a periodic table, and remember that we find metals on the left and non-metals on the right. We've seen that ionic compounds are formed when metals react with non-metals. Ions are atoms with a charge, and remember that metals form positive ions, and most non-metals form negative ions. I'm showing you some metal ions here. We've got Na+, Mg2+, and Al3+. The first idea that you need to understand is that the charge on a metal ion is often the same as the group number in the periodic table. So sodium is in group 1 and forms a 1 plus ion. Magnesium is in group 2 and forms a 2 plus ion. And aluminium is in group 3 and that forms a 3 plus ion. We can also see this with other metals from these groups, which I'm showing you here. Both lithium and potassium are in group 1 and they form 1 plus ions. Beryllium and calcium are both in group 2 and they form 2 plus ions, and gallium and indium are in group 3 and these can form 3 plus ions. Now I should point out that certain metals do not follow this pattern, and a good example are the transition metals. These can form several different ions. A good example of this is iron. This can form a 2 plus ion and a 3 plus ion. Scientists call these iron 2 and iron 3, and you'll sometimes see these in compounds. Another good example is copper, which can form a 1 plus ion and a 2 plus ion. And again, we call these copper 1 and copper 2. Let's take a look now at non metal ions, and I'm showing you two non metal ions here. We've got the oxide ion O2 minus and the fluoride ion F minus. Now, just like with metal ions, we can relate these to their groups in the periodic table. Oxygen's in group 6 and forms a 2 minus ion. So does sulfur, which is also in group 6. This forms the sulfide ion, S2 minus. Fluorine's in group 7 and this forms the 1 minus fluoride ion. Chlorine and bromine are also in group 7 and they also form 1 minus ions. Now, there are some non-metal ions which consist of several non-metal atoms chemically combined, and we can see some of these here. I should point out that if an exam question requires you to use one of these ions, then you will be given the formula. Now, there are a couple of non-metal ions which are different to the rest, and that's because they're positive, unlike the rest of the non-metal ions which are negative. These ions are the hydrogen ion H+, and the ammonium ion NH4, Plus. Again, you could see these in exam questions. I'm showing you here the ionic compound sodium sulfate, which has the formula Na2SO4, and calcium hydroxide, which has the formula CaOH2. In the next video, you're going to learn how to work out the formulas of compounds such as these. It's a really useful skill to learn and will help you a lot in chemistry. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe how metal ions are positive and most non-metal ions are negative. You should then be able to relate charges on ions to groups in the periodic table.